Oh, <clears throat> welcome to the Mr. G podcast. I am Mr. G, Gregory Brandt. I am coming to you from the outskirts of Chinatown in Honolulu, Hawaii. Today is January 10th, Tuesday. Feels like Wednesday. It might be Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. Uh, my motto, my quote this year, I should say, is don't complain, don't explain. And that goes for everybody, wherever you are in life, don't complain and don't explain. Whatever is going on in your life, don't complain about it. And whatever you're doing, don't explain it, just do it. And that goes for this podcast as well. I've been switching off one podcast, I'll talk about sports, the other podcast, I'll talk about something else, about something more universal about life. I think the last podcast, it wasn't about sports. It was about uh, the universe and our place in the universe. And a particular Brian Cox quote, the astrophysicist that I read. Uh, today, on today's episode, the 20-minute episode, uh, we'll do half and half. I'll talk about basketball and the NBA all-star voting for 10 minutes. And then I'm going to talk about the U.S. election voting for 10 minutes. All right, uh, so getting on to it, uh, without looking at any uh, charts or anything like that, which I did not pull up, I did somewhat research, I wrote down some topics to talk about today. Sometimes during this podcast, I will just go for 20 minutes and just speak for 20 minutes. Most people cannot do that. Uh, I'm taking a skill. I'm also explaining, which I don't want to do. But that's one reason why I enjoy this podcast, doing this podcast is because it comes natural to me. And today I wrote down a list about a few different topics, which plenty of uh, uh, things to talk about for the next 20 minutes. Um, I did not, however, uh, have a, a tablet or something else to look at as the current all-star voting. So if you have, if you like basketball, NBA basketball, you can vote for the NBA all-stars as well. The next round of voting starts tomorrow, January 11th. Uh, so pick your favorite teams, pick your favorite players on your favorite teams, um, or try to be as fair as possible if you're a, a true enthusiast of NBA. And I've watched the NBA this year more than I have in many other years. So I feel um, uh, in a fitting position to uh, judge on who I thinks uh, who I who I thinks deserves to be the All Stars. All right, so let's start with the Eastern Conference. That's the easiest one. Um, you have Milwaukee Bucks, Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak. Uh, he's uh, uh, averaging um, like most uh, great big men in the NBA today uh, is averaging almost thir around 30 points a game, around 10 rebounds, around seven or more assists. And so Giannis and Joel Embiid are automatic picks in the Eastern Conference. Joel Embiid for the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, and then you have uh, Damian Lillard, I would say. He's one of the most popular players in the NBA. This is his first year with Milwaukee. Uh, uh, Tyrese Halliburton as well. Uh, he has, I, I believe, led the league in assists this year. Once again, I'm not looking at any uh, stats or paper. Uh, he recently got injured, so uh, but I think it's fitting to announce him as a, a starter for the All-Star, uh, even though he'll be replaced by an injury player. So that's four out of the five. Who am I? And, and, and number five, I got to throw in my favorite uh, player, one of my favorite players, Jimmy Butler. Uh, Miami has uh, played above expectations as usual. Uh, and so then there you go. I left out the Celtics in the starting five, right? We got Giannis, we got Joel Embiid, we got um, uh, Damian Lillard, uh, and uh, Jimmy Butler. Is that four that I just named four? Giannis, Joel Embiid, Damian Lillard. Uh, oh, and, and Tyrese Halliburton. So that's five. And I left out the number one team in the Eastern Conference as far as record goes, the Boston Celtics. I guess that kind of tells you how I feel about the Boston Celtics. So we're going to have seven starters in the Eastern Conference. Why? Because it's my podcast. It's the Mr. G Hawaii podcast. So we're having seven starters because it's easier. And I picked two out of the Celtics because they have the best record. Uh, I'm not going to pick Brown because I dislike him more than I dislike Jason strange smile tatum 
And also, I, and who who am I to talk about a strange smile? I'm sorry, that's the one of the meanest thing. You got a strange smile. I shouldn't have said that. Why did I say that? I'm sorry, Jason Tatum. I don't know why I dislike him, but every time I see a bag of chips and I see his face on it, I don't know. I guess it's just the Celtics. I'm not a Celtics fan for whatever reason. I don't like their colors. I don't like their attitude. I don't like their fans. But um, picking two players, Kristaps Porzingis has helped the Boston Celtics achieve the number one record in the Eastern Conference. And you do, uh, it's historic to reward the teams that are playing uh, very well. Um, after the Detroit Pistons upset the Lakers uh, all the way back in uh, 2005, I believe. Uh, the next year, uh, I believe uh, four out of the four, five, uh, or maybe all five starters for the Eastern Conference were the Detroit Pistons that won the championship the previous year. Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton, uh, Ben Wallace, Rasheed Wallace, and uh, uh, Tayshawn Prince. Uh, and so they do reward that, and, and that is fitting. Uh, you don't reward individual stats. It has changed over the LeBron era, uh, where it <clears throat> seems like stats are more important. And stats have more uh, say-so nowadays than they did uh, with the, as far as the best team. So those are my picks for the Eastern Conference. I picked seven All-Stars. The Western Conference, it's really uh, – it's hard because so many players are left out, um, including in the East and in the West. But I picked seven in the East there. Now, in the West, okay, you got to say uh, the top teams are Minnesota and Oklahoma City. Uh, so they each deserves a player without, without saying anything else. And then LeBron James gets the most votes of any player – in the Western Conference, but I'm not putting him in my top five, all right, because they have an under 500 record. Um, the Clippers have three, four uh, former MVP candidates, and and Kawhi Leonard is deserving of a, a starting all-star nod. I think I saw his stats for, like, the last uh, 12 games, and he averaged, like, a crazy amount. He's been playing so well, and so has James Harden. So if you wanted to really be legit about it, and if they keep winning up until the all-star break, I think James Harden, despite the Western Conference being full of all-stars, once again, as, as it always seems to be for the last 30, 40 years I've been watching basketball, the Western Conference is much more stronger than the Eastern Conference. So one thing about the LeBron air all-star game, when it wasn't East versus West and the players got to choose the different players, is you all, normally have way more all-stars in the West. But with that being said, uh, the Clippers are one of my favorite teams, and I actually picked them to win the championship this year um, uh, early before the season started. So I would award their top two players. And then you also have Paul George and Russell Westbrook coming off the bench. But two out of the three starters with, um, I would say, James Harden deserves, deserves a, a starting nod, and uh, Kawhi Leonard even more so. Um, <clears throat> now you, the, the, the NBA champions, the 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 uh, reigning NBA champion, Denver Nuggets. Um, you got to give the Joker a starting nod. He's been playing crazy. Uh, he's he's almost averaging a triple-double. He's the MVP in the league right now, if you base it on statistics. And he had that a crazy buzzer beater where he hit a three-pointer, like, and he shoots it so strangely. I talked previously about how Jokic catches the ball. at the uh, he, he catches it at the top of his head, which makes it really hard to guard. When the, he gets the ball, then he can just put it in the room before the defender can do anything. And his form, he literally shoots it from, and you'll see like kids or, or amateurs doing that. You rarely see a professional athlete shoot a three point shot from behind the head like that. Uh, but Jokic does that, and he had that one of the best buzzer beaters I've ever seen um, <clears throat> the other night. So that's three of my starters in the West. I got two Clippers and, and, and you can say I'm being biased, but Hey, they're all-star voting, but I'm not being that biased because James Harden playing awesome. He's leading the Clippers to uh, uh, one of the best records in the Western conference. And they have so much experience on that team. I, I, I they're the, the team you do not want to see in a seven game series in the NBA playoffs who would win in a seven game series, the Clippers or the Suns? Oh, okay. Who, which, which has better chemistry, which team has more experience, you know? Oh, the, the Suns have a top uh, big three with Booker, Durant, and Bradley Beal. Okay, yeah, sure they do. No, the Clippers have a, a – Bradley Beal has never been an MVP candidate. Bradley Beal has never been a finals MVP. So 
um, the Clippers, the Nuggets. So then I, I, I mentioned Minnesota and OKC are uh, the two best teams in the Western Conference. And I'd say uh, SGA, Shea Gilchrist, Alexander deserves a starting nod. Uh, but then you're like um, looking at, uh, um, uh, uh, so in my starting five, I'm not going to explain. Don't complain. Don't explain. All right. But yeah, you know who I left off? Steph Curry. You know why? Because their team's not a good record. You know, I left off LeBron James. You know why? Because their team doesn't have a good record. You know, I left off AD because their team does not have a good record. And then you're like, oh, okay. Well, so, so I'd say Minnesota and gets a, gets a player in. So I'd say uh, Minnesota, uh, not Rudy Gobert, not Carl Anthony Towns, but um, Ant. Um, so those are my all star vote five for the Western Conference. I got who am I? Who am I left leaving out? But I got four out of five. I'm not so so sure about Ant, but uh, four out of five, Kawhi Leonard. Uh, why did I all of a sudden go go blind care? You know, something something must have came into the room. Some some energy must have came into the room. A gingerbread coffee, it's so delicious. Jokic for Denver Nuggets deserves a starting nine. Oh, Luka Doncic from the Dallas Mavericks. He's incredible. He's the best player in the NBA. Luka Doncic and Jokic, Jokic are the two best Joker are the two best players in the NBA. So my starting five in the West, I have Luka Doncic, uh, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, um, Shea Gilchrist, Alexander, uh, and. Uh, Luka Doncic, Joker, Shea Gilchrist, Alexander. Uh, I I don't know why I just got, drew a blank. Shea Gilchrist, Alexander, Jokic. <laughs> no, it's not a big deal. We, we'll move on. Those are my All Star votes. All right. Now with the election. Okay. So, um, you cannot minimize you when you're recording this meeting. Go again. So with the election results, all right, the Western Conference. These are the leading vote getters right now. LeBron James is leading in the Western Conference with 2 million votes. Kevin Durant is, is second with 1.8 million. I wouldn't put them either in my uh, starting five, right? Uh, yeah, I did a good. I, I mean, I, I, uh, I, yeah, my starting five is good. I didn't put Steph Curry in my starting five. In the Western Conference, I got Luca Dantrans, Shea Gilchrist Alexander, James Harden, uh, Kawhi Leonard, and Nikolai Jokic, Joker. That's my starting five in the West. My starting five in the Eastern Conference, I have Giannis, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Halliburton, Jimmy Butler. That's four out of five. And uh, I, I, I previously said Damian Lillard, but... Uh, instead, we'll go with Jason Tatum. So Jason Tatum, Jimmy Butler, Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Tyrese Halliburton. Those are my starting five in the Eastern Conference. All right. Now, other types of voting. If you want to vote, but as far as the NBA All-Star voting, voting is happening right now. You can vote in many different ways. And, uh, you know, if you're hearing this, Vote for your all-stars, and I'm curious who are you voting for. Send them to me on Twitter. Now, for another type of voting, the 2024 U.S. presidential election voting. The best way to get uh, information about the presidential election, it's not from the mainstream legacy media. It's not from uh, Twitter or TikTok. The best way is uh, to find the real facts about who's leading in the 2024 presidential election, you follow the money. So you go to Las Vegas, what are the betting odds, right? I remember in 2016, when Donald Trump upset Hillary Clinton, uh, you know, the New York Times was saying some crazy number, like uh, Hillary Clinton had a 91% chance to win or something like that. And I couldn't believe it because, you know, it's uh, Donald Trump was selling out stadiums and you know, Hillary Clinton couldn't fill up a high school gymnasium. And so I looked into it on my, and I looked into Vegas and Vegas had Hillary as a slight favorite, but not as a huge favorite as, as one would believe. And so that night 
It was the first presidential election I did not vote in 2016. They wouldn't let me vote because I didn't have a place of residency. The address that I used was an address to receive mail, but it wasn't a uh, home or a physical address. So they did not let me vote in the 2016 election. It was the first presidential election that I had not voted in, and I was legally of age to vote. So I knew Donald Trump had a chance, though, because you follow the money. It's 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 in and Vegas wasn't built on losers. Right. So if you want to know the facts, you can bet on any presidential election in Las Vegas. You can bet on just about anything. Uh, Oscars, sports, of course. But let's get into it. the 2024 presidential election. Who is the favorite? Guess Donald Trump is the favorite with five to four odds, five to four odds. Uh, means that you have to, uh, if you put down $4, you win $5. So he's the favorite, but he's not a huge favorite. Up next, we have Joe Biden, who's nine to four odds. So if you bet $4, you win $9 with Joe Biden. Then in third place is Nikki Haley with 13 to two odds. So you bet $2, you win $13 if Nikki Haley becomes the first woman president. I pray that she doesn't. Fourth up, Gavin Newsom, who's 10 to one odds. And, and that seems kind of odd, you know, I don't, th I, I mean, that's, that seems kind of odd, pun not intended, pun not intended, no, 10 to 1 odds, though, so you bet $100 that Gavin Newsom uh, becomes president, and if he becomes president, you win $1,000, I don't think he has that much of a chance at all, you know, I, I don't think the, uh, the legacy media, the mainstream media, and the, the people really, uh, uh, the people that are, 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 are making these odds, they really know what's going on. I think I have a really good um, vibe of the world and how people think in the collective consciousness. One thing that Patrick Bet David said today, this morning, the first thing I woke up to was a TikTok video of his, and he had a prediction that this 2024 election will be the last election that has any control by the legacy media, by CNN, MSNBC, all the mainstream media, they used to like have so much power in previous presidential elections, but not anymore. In 2028, the power is gonna be with the people. The power is gonna be with podcasts. Uh, the 2028 election is gonna be about independent journalists like myself and like Patrick Bet David as well. Uh, so, so that was really refreshing to hear. Uh, you know, history is no longer written by the winners as they say. All right, so Donald Trump is the favorite, five to four. Joe Biden, nine to four. Nikki Haley, 13 to two. Gavin Newsom, 10 to one. And then in fourth place, we have Robert Kennedy Jr. with 20 to one odds. Hey, uh, you know, there's been a Kennedy in the White House before. It is possible. I believe he's running as a third party candidate and he may, he probably won't win, but I assume he'd get um, uh, as much as the vote as Ross Perot did probably. Uh, it's really hard for a third party candidate to do well in presidential elections, historically speaking, going back more than 100 years, even the great Teddy Roosevelt wasn't able to win in a third party candidate. Uh, and he's on Mount Rushmore. He's one of the most beloved presidents of all time. Uh, but after um, he uh, left the office, he tried to start a third party and he didn't go uh, successful. It it was more successful than most third party candidates, as was Ross Perot. Uh, but being a third party candidate, they say it takes a lot of votes from either the left or the right. And that's probably what's going to happen this year. So Robert Kennedy Jr., 20 to 1 odds. Hey, you bet $100 Robert Kennedy Jr. to win the presidency. If he wins the presidency, he went 2000. And, and, you know, history does change. So now when uh, people are connected in podcasts and independent journalists uh, do have more say so, I can see why Robert Kennedy Jr. is in fifth place right now for being the next president of the United States. Robert Kennedy Jr. is on just about every podcast. You see him on Tucker Carlson. I think he went on Nelk. Uh, you see him uh, on all these different podcasts, and he's an honest person. He admits to any things that he's done, and he's not perfect. And I think that's what people like about him. My favorite candidate is Vivek. Uh, Vivek is the smartest, uh, most likable candidate. Uh, he's the most honest candidate uh, and you know the mainstream media the legacy media they're like scared of him they're trying to trash him uh, but he asked the right questions he's very brave he's the smartest candidate and uh, that's who i uh, really support vivek 
Also, as far as Las Vegas, after Robert Kennedy Jr., Michelle Obama is 25 to 1 odds to win the presidency. She's not even a politician. She's the former husband, or excuse me, wife of a politician. She's And she's 25 to 1 odds to be the, the president of the United States. There's almost 400 million people in this country. One, two, three, four, five. There's only five people ahead of her to be president, the most powerful person in the world. That, that, that's nepotism. That's Michelle Obama marrying right. So that means she married the right person, right? She's ahead of Ron DeSantis, who's next up 33 to one odds. Then the v current vice president, Kamala Harris, 40 to one odds. Can you believe that? Michelle Obama's 25 to one odds to win the presidency. And Kamala Harris has way worse odds, 40 to one odds. And she's the freaking vice president. All right, uh, right after Kamala Harris, we have Vivek Ramsey, 50 to one odds. You bet $100 on Vivek to win the presidency. And if he wins, you win uh, $5,000. That's, that's pretty good, that's pretty good money. All other candidates listed as 100 to one or higher. So uh, I have bet on previous uh, <laughs> uh, elections. Um, like I said, the people that voted on Donald Trump in 2016, they didn't get as big as a payoff as you might uh, believe. Uh, granted, the New York Times were saying crazy things like, oh, Hillary Clinton has an 80, 90% chance of beating Donald Trump. Uh, but Las Vegas was not. Las Vegas made her a favorite, a slight favorite, but not a huge favorite. And I saw that before I went to go uh, listen to the election coverage. I listened to it on the radio in the middle of some woods. <laughs> and so I was up all night listening to the presidential election, uh, cooking food, and under like candlelight and uh, uh, under the stars here in Hawaii. It's actually pretty beautiful. And I was really happy and I was really happy for Donald Trump. I, I, I'm not a huge Trump supporter. I do support, I told you I support Vivek, but I support Donald Trump because of what they're doing uh, to him in this election. And um, it's, it's just, uh, uh, you know, for them to uh, attack their uh, presidential opponents like that uh, and to um, imprison them and to make up these uh, bogus charges, uh, and they're they're attacking the fabric of the uh, Constitution of the United States, including freedom of speech, and um, um, and that's happening all over the place. And I, I'd say, uh, without hesitation, that this current administration is the most corrupt administration in uh, in recent years in the United States. And that goes to Hunter Biden having ties to Ukraine and the billions and billions of American tax dollars being sent to Ukraine to support this, uh, this, this proxy war against Russia that is not supported by the people in the United States. And uh, you have our infrastructure falling apart. Uh, you have 20 million undocumented uh, immigrants crossing the Southern border. And, and, and Biden is all about saying, uh, uh, is all about politics, is all about uh, gender politics. And, 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 and they're trying to divide people. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not, uh, and, and them having so much control over the media, which is slipping. Is, and like I said, Patrick Bet David is right. The 2024 election is going to be the last election. Even when big news stories come out, like the Jeffrey, E story, uh, they only give you the cookie cutter uh, top part. They're, they're like, oh, Bill Clinton, ooh, wink, wink. Or, um, you know, uh, uh, the guy in the wheelchair was at some crazy orgy. Like, it's like, oh, but they don't tell you the actual news where, you know, Mr. E uh, had a, a, in his relationship with Mrs. Maxwell uh, and Mrs. Maxwell's father having ties to the uh, Jewish um, Secret Service and Epstein being an agent for the Secret Jewish, the excuse me, the Israeli Secret Service and uh, Mr. E being an agent for the Israeli Secret Service and Mr. E uh, having uh, blackmail on uh, very powerful people, politicians in the United States. They're not telling you that part. They're not saying how. Why does the United States have such allegiance towards Israel? Anybody that's like, like I said earlier in the podcast, I, I have a good scope of like the general feel of what's going on. And anybody that goes on TikTok knows that 
the majority of people in the United States, they're like supporting Palestine. That's like the heavy supporters. And then when I, uh, I was outside at some sort or no, uh, some sort of uh, uh, Palestine Israeli thing and here in Hawaii and like they were um, the Israeli protesters were outnumbered like 20 to one or more 30 to one. And uh, there was like this guy that looked like a secret FBI agent or something. He's like, I'm like, wow, they're so outnumbered. And he's like, no, 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 they're, they're not outnumbered. Uh, um, this is just a rare thing. If you look at the statistics, uh, you know, it's actually more American support Israeli, Israel, you know, and it's just like, no, not, not really the case. But the United States seems to have unwavering support for Israel. And I'm not saying it's because Jeffrey Epstein was a secret agent for Israel, the Israeli Secret Service and has dirt on American politicians. That's not all of it. It feels like Israel has something else that the American politicians are aware of that they don't want to piss Israel off and they have to support Israel. And that's where we're at. And if there's a third world war, believe me, Israel is going to be right in the middle of it. So, all right. With that being said, everybody, I uh, hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, uh, join me uh, for the next podcast, Mr. G Hawaii podcast, available wherever you listen to your podcasts, Apple podcasts, Spotify podcasts, Amazon podcasts, Audacity podcasts. And also take a listen and share it with your friend too. Um, I enjoy doing these and I'm glad that you listen. Have a nice day.